Well, good morning, church family. It's still morning. We might have before 12. Well, I've been uh, designated to preach to you this morning, but most of the uh, elders and uh, pastors are away, so I'm here with you this morning. The title of the sermon this morning is God's Attributes and the Plan and His Plan of Redemption. So as we go through this, we'll learn of the attributes of God and His plan that He put to save humanity from this sin-stained world. Our scripture reading is from Psalms 33 verses 8 and 9. And it says, Let all the earth fear Jehovah. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Here we are told that Jehovah is the creator of this earth. From Tohu to Bohu, from a black blob in the cosmos to order. In the first day, in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, God created the day, and in verse 4, chapter 1, he created the night. Then in, on the fourth day, in Genesis 1.16, he created the sun and the moon. On the second day, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 6, he created the waters and in verse 8, he created the heavens. On the fifth day, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, he created the sea creatures and the winged birds. On the third day, he cre on Genesis 1, 10, he created the dry land. And in verse 11, he created the grass and the trees and in the sixth day he created the animals man and woman so let's turn our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1 and we'll start at verse 25 Verse 25 of Genesis chapter 1, it says, And God made the beasts of the, of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 26, And God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the seas, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Then God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Now we should ask a question, what is the image of God? The image of God, the Bible tells us it in spirit and in truth. We'll, we'll go on now. Then God, verse 28, then God, uh, then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth with, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the seas, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. So Adam and Eve were given dominion over this earth. 
everything that was on this earth, he was to rule over. Verse 29, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be food. So he even gave them what they should eat, their diet. Verse 30, Also to every beast of, of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. So even the animals were to eat herbs. They were vegetarian too. Verse 31, Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And so the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So that is... Six days God created the heaven and the earth. Chapter 1 and verse 2, it goes on. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Verse 3, then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his works which he had created. Now on the Sabbath day, God did three things that were special. Number one, he rested. Number two, he blessed it. And number three, he sanctified it. He set it apart for man. And in Desire of Ages, in page 291, it says, On the seventh day, God's angels and all the sons of God, in unison with Adam and Eve and the Godhead, sang for joy. They had a party on the first week of creation. And Alan White in Patriarchs and Prophets says this, God saw that a Sabbath was essential for man, even in paradise. He needed to lay aside his own interests and pursue for one day of the seven that he might more fully contemplate the work of God and meditate upon his power and goodness. He needed a Sabbath to permit, uh, remind him more vividly of God and to awaken gratitude because of all that he enjoyed and possessed, possessed came from the beneficent hand of his creator. God's creative power. We'll have a look. God created the trees... that created grass, herbs, trees in one attribute. They are physical. He created them on the third day. Genesis 1, 2, on the third day God created grass, herbs and trees. The animals were created with two attributes. They are physical and they have a mentality. They can think. If you show love to a dog, he will respond to you. Animals share emotions and feelings. They were created on the sixth day. On the sixth day, God created all the animals and cattle with two attributes. The Lord God created Adam with three attributes. He had a physical, a mental, and a spiritual nature. That spiritual nature was his connection with God. That was the likeness that Jesus, Jesus, uh, God said you make him in his image, in our image, the spiritual connection. 
That was Adam when he was created. He was the son of God. He had no earthly father. God created him in his own image. Created him on the sixth day. Adam was the son of God. The angels were created with four attributes. They are celestial, mental, spiritual, and they are physical. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 7, Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. If he's a little lower, Jesus was given three attributes, the same as Adam was given at his creation. Satan still retained his four attributes after his rebellion. He is anti-celestial, mental, anti-spiritual, and he's physical. So you don't mess with the devil. Satan is an angel fallen. Let's have a look at the seven attributes of the Lord God, the Godhead. From Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 to Genesis chapter 3 verse 23, you will find these words, the Lord God, coupled together 21 times. And from there on, after Genesis chapter 3 verse 23, they will not be seen coupled together again unless it is spoken through a prophet and then the prophet will say thus says the Lord God but speaking directly the Lord God we won't see it in the Old Testament why because there was a split in the Godhead in the Old Testament Eloi is the father The Lord God is Yahweh Elohim. The Lord is Jehovah. He's singular. Masculine noun. It appears 6,823 times in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, it equals Jesus. It appears 888 times. That in numerical values means a new beginning, a new start. God, which equals Elohim, is plural, masculine noun. In the New Testament, it equals the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Eloi in the Old Testament, the Father in the New Testament, Jehovah in the Old Testament, a Son, Jesus in the New Testament. The Spirit of God in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit. Let's have a look at the seven attributes of Eloi, the Father. He's omnipotent, divine, celestial, spiritual, mental, physical, and of innocent. Eloi became the father in the New Testament. If you look into 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 14, or Psalms 2, verse 7, or Hebrews 1, 5, it tells you that the father begot a son. In those three verses, they all are telling about the same thing. He begot a son. He became a father. The seven attributes of Jehovah. He's omnipotent, divine, celestial, 
spiritual, mental, physical, and innocent. Jehovah became a son, named Jesus. He was known as was Emmanuel, God with us, Matthew 1.23. When Jesus was born of a Virgin Mary, he dropped four of those attributes. The ones coloured in yellow, he dropped. He was born, he, he was born with three attributes. Physical, mental, and a spiritual nature. The same attributes that he gave Adam when he was created. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 11, we find Jehovah clothed his divinity with humanity and was called Jesus. The three attributes of Jesus are there down the bottom. Physical, mental and a spiritual nature. The seven attributes of the Holy Spirit. I'm innocent, omnipotent, divine, celestial, spiritual and mental. But he doesn't have a physical body. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. The Spirit of God became the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it tells us that the, the Spirit of God ho hovered over the waters. And in uh, John chapter 14, verse 16, I'll just turn to that and, so I'm not making a mistake of what it says. 16, verse 14. Sixteen goes the other way around. Fourteen, sixteen. Sorry. And here in verse sixteen it says, "And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another Helper, that He may abide with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him." But you know him, for he dwells in you and he will be in you. The Holy Spirit, that is our comforter. That is the one that Jesus left us after he went back to heaven. And he left us because Jesus could only be in one place at one time. But the Holy Spirit, because he is omnipresent, he can be everywhere with everyone. All three members of the Godhead have seven attributes and all partake of the fullness of the Godhead. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 28, verses 18 and uh, verses 18 and 19 here Jesus just before he left this earth he told his disciples all authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth and verse 19 he tells us go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit in the name of the Godhead. Jesus, the second Adam, was born a son of God. He had no earthly father. He was born through the Virgin Mary, but through 
the Holy Spirit descending on her. Jehovah clothed his divinity with humanity in Jesus. He had a spiritual, physical, and a mental attribute. The same that he gave Adam. Jesus came to this earth to do battle with the devil. Where Adam failed, Jesus overcame. Jesus had no need to be born again. He was born a son of God. Luke 1.35 When Adam brought depravity, sin and death upon humanity and he lost our third spiritual attribute, Adam was told, in the day you eat, you shall surely die. The question is, did Adam die that day? No, he didn't. The Bible tells us that he lived over 900 years. But a substitute had to be found. Someone... Thing had to die that day. And when man sinned against God, it was God who took the first step towards reconciliation. Adam accepted God's plan of redemption and reconciliation based upon God's covenant worship agreement and provision for redemption and forgiveness was formulated and agreed upon by both God and man. The covenant between God and man was sealed with the blood of a slain lamb, which typified that Jehovah would step down and become the lamb of God, Genesis 3.15. He would come into this world as the Messiah, and take away the sin of fallen man in order for man to come in unity with, the God, with the God's family again. Adam, by slaying the lamb, transferred his death sentence upon Christ the Messiah to come. The covenant in Eden was signed in blood. Jehovah must step down from his throne and become, become a son, baby Jesus, born in Bethlehem's manger to rescue humanity. When Jesus was in Nicod uh, Zacchaeus' house, he said these words, and they're written in Luke 19, verse 10. He said, Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. The question is, what was lost? Our spiritual at attribute was lost. Our spiritual connection had been lost. The moment Adam sinned, his connection with God was lost. God's plan of redemption. Today, every person born of a woman other than Jesus Christ is born in two attributes. They have a physical and mental attribute. That's what we're born with. We have to pick up the third attribute, our spiritual attribute. Adam's sin robbed humanity of one of the attributes, the spiritual. 
a spiritual connection. That's why in Psalms 51 verse 5, David wrote, and he said, In sin my mother conceived me. Did his mother commit adultery? No, what they're saying is that when he was born, he wasn't complete. He was only in two at two attributes. His spiritual connection with God was not there. We today, every person that's born is only born in two attributes, like Sam the donkey, like the animals. And that is why when Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and Jesus told him that he must be born again to get into the kingdom of God and he couldn't believe it. He didn't know what he was talking about. Now this man was a very intelligent man. He probably knew the Old Testament off by heart but he couldn't comprehend this. We must be born again of water and the spirit. John chapter 3, verse 3. How do we get born again? When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour and we repent of our sins, ask forgiveness and confess them, our names are written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. And to do Today we have a ceremony which is called baptism. And at the baptismal ceremony, when we go into the watery grave, we go down into the water symbolising death to self and rise again to the newness of life, to a new beginning, a new way of life. That's the, what baptism is all about. But also that our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Most important. Paul said that he died daily. Every day he died. Yet I live, he said. Yet not I, but Christ lived in me. Lives in me. What he was doing, he was confessing every day his sins and, to an, and he woke to a new way of life for the day. Jesus taught his disciples for three and a half years but he just couldn't get through to them. The reason being is that they were looking for an earthly kingdom to rule on David's throne, overthrow the Romans and they would be great again. But Jesus was telling them that his kingdom was, was not of this earth. His kingdom was a spiritual kingdom. And at the last supper of the night when he washed his disciples' feet and he broke the bread, he said these words, With fervent desire I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. He was telling them that he was going to die. The disciples didn't believe it. They said, no way. Peter said, look, no way, I'll die with you. He said, everybody's going to scatter. They didn't believe him. And that very night, Peter denied him three times. Peter did not even know his own heart. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, it says, The day that you eat, you shall surely die. That night when, Peter, when Jesus broke the bread and confirmed the new covenant, the death sentence, Adam's death sentence, was transferred upon Christ the Messiah. On the day Jesus confirmed the covenant, he would surely die. And in 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, it says, The day you eat, you shall surely die. And that afternoon, by three o'clock in the afternoon, when the high priest was about to kill the lamb at the Passover lamb for the evening sacrifice at three o'clock, the veil in the temple was torn from top to bottom and the lamb escaped from the priest's hands and ran off. And the, the temple, that veil that separated the holy place to the most holy place was torn in two. And that veil wasn't just a thin veil, it was as thick as a man's hand. It was torn from top to bottom, signifying that the old system of slaying the lamb had passed away. And the new Jesus, the true lamb, had paid the price for man's sin. The Godhead could not rescue humanity from sin. Jehovah had to become a son and die upon a cross. This gave Jesus the right to present his shed blood in the investigative judgment in the heavenly sanctuary. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 12. The Bible tells us that every one of us must stand before the judgment seat of God. The question is, if our names are written in the Lamb's book of life, in the investigative judgment, that is the Lamb's diary, when our names get called up, if they are found in his diary, Jesus steps forward and takes our case. He is our advocate and propitiator. Our advocate means he's your defence lawyer. Propitiator, one who pays the costs and suffers the consequences. Jesus has done that for each and every one of us. But our names have to be written in the land's book of life. If our names are not there, Jesus can't step forward to take our case. We have to defend ourselves and the devil knows every sin that we have ever committed. The Bible tells us in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. That is the payment that we get. But if we have Jesus as our defence lawyer, it's not us being judged, it's Jesus being judged. He has led a life without sin and that life, he offers it to us. It's good news. We go home free. But we must have our names written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus, by becoming the Son of Man, had conquered sin, death and the devil in three attributes, and by grace, he has adopted us as his children. Where Adam failed, Jesus conquered. That is why on the morning that Jesus rose from the grave, he conquered the grave. And by conquering the grave, says this, O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? 
1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 55. Jesus has not only fulfilled the plan of salvation, which every one of us has a free choice to accept it or reject it, but on top of that, he has conquered the grave and he offers eternal life for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. There's no exceptions. But we must accept him as our Lord and Saviour. That's how you get your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. If you don't have your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, I'm afraid you'll have to, when the judgment comes up, you'll have to defend yourself. The fullness of the plan of redemption will be realised that God at the second coming of Jesus. You know, at the second coming of Jesus, everybody will utter a prayer that is alive at that time. Every person, whether he believes or not, will utter a prayer. The thing is, which prayer are you going to utter? The prayer from Isaiah 25 verse 9 says, lo, this is our God, we have waited for him. But for the people who don't believe and have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Saviour, they utter the prayer from Revelation chapter 6, verse 16. They cry for the rocks and the mountains to fall in on them and hide them from the face of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters, the plan has been laid out. It has been completed by God. He has offered it to us free of cost. All we have to do is accept it and follow it. God, through his word and the Bible, tells us the way which we should go. We should study his word every day so it makes sure that we are on the right track because the devil is going around like a road, uh, roaring lion whom, seeing whom he can deceive and he's a very cunning thing. He knows the plan of salvation and he knows every trick in the book. So that's why we must study the Bible. Not only read it, but study it. When you study it, you get the hidden treasures that are in it. By reading it, it's only casual. You only run it over the surface. Study it. By studying it, you'll discover the gems that are hidden in it. I'd like to point something out in this photo. This is a photo of an artist's impression, I suppose, but it's a photo of the second coming of Jesus. You see King Jesus in the Senate with the, the cloud of angels all around him. But you'll notice something, that there's one angel who has broken rank. That angel is the Archangel Gabriel. What is he doing breaking rank? Revelation chapter 20 and verses 9 and 10, I think it is. It states that the archangel Gabriel must come down and before the dead in Christ rise, he bounds the devil for a thousand years. And that's what that photo is showing, the archangel Gabriel coming down to bind the devil for a thousand years and then the dead in Christ arise from their grave. Brothers and sisters, May we all be ready when Jesus returns and his return it will be soon because the prophecies are being fulfilled before our very eyes day by day. It won't be long. We are at the very wire, very end of this world's history. May we all be ready for that day. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for Jesus 
and for the plan of salvation, dear Lord. Lord, we pray that each and every one of us here this morning will be there at your second coming, dear Lord, so that we may have eternal life, dear Lord. Lord, we pray that uh, every one of us has accepted your plan. Lord, we pray that you'll bless the people in this coming week, wherever they may be. We pray that you'll watch over, guide and protect them. This is our prayer in thy holy name. Amen and amen.